Alright, so today I watched a little documentary. Now, I have a feeling, by the way, that the topic that I'm going to be talking about might be a tad bit too controversial to some people out there, but, oh god, I'm so I'm so tired of tiptoeing around other people's sensibilities. If, if you like using the word triggered a lot, throw some goddamn thick skin! You, you just watch my entertainment vids on my YouTube channel, if you are, okay? I, I try to dish out a little bit of everything here, okay? Which, which may or may not be the best way to go. I understand. Some people like keeping separate channels based on specific topics that may or may not be all that controversial. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just don't work that way. I'm all over the map. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. I've always have been, okay? If you don't like this video or this thing that you're listening to, then please, for the love of God, be an adult about it and find something that you do like, okay? That's all I ask. So, <laughs> It's a hell of a thing that I even have to say that, by the way. But uh, anyway, yesterday I came, I came across a certain um, <clears throat> a certain YouTube video. YouTube video. Now it could have been illegally uploaded, uh, because it was some sort of a documentary. Now I don't know. It was from the sketchier part of YouTube. <laughs> Which, thank God, there's a sketchier part of YouTube. And they're the wrong side of the tracks. Nah. The one place that hasn't been gentrified yet. Although, granted, you know, lots of trolls. Lots of trolls. So you gotta watch out for them. Yeah, they're, they're gonna get you. Anyway, the documentary's title at first sounds a little tinfoil hat-ish. Uh, anything with the word conspiracy in it can instantly conjures up thoughts of tinfoil hats. Although, don't get me wrong, aliens on the moon are so totally reading our minds right now. Yes, they are. <laughs> anyway, the name of the documentary is called The Light Bulb Conspiracy. I'm so glad I actually got the name of this, because guess what? I, I'm just looking at, looking at where this was in my history <laughs> on my browser, and it was on YouTube, but it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone now with a, along with the the uh, channel it was on which is um interesting that's interesting but i'm glad to see I'm, I'm, I'm glad i'm glad that i saw it regardless i'm glad that i saw it even if it was illegally uploaded just for clarification though there is no conspiracy it's how our society works because well, okay, perhaps I should kind of explain. And believe me, this is going to go into Apple territory, because of course it is. It's going to go into Apple territory. Now, first off, <clears throat> did you know, I, we're about to educate you, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're going to educate you. We're going to educate the pants off you today. First off, did you know the oldest running light bulb to ever exist that is still running to this very day is over 100 years old. Yes, people, that's right, you heard me. It is actually 115 years old, to be precise, and it is still running to this very day. Now, I will provide the, the links to this perfectly fine, extremely dated website from the mid-90s, because there is a live webcam staring at this bulb, 24-7. Now, going back to this documentary that's no longer on YouTube now, it, it was stated that, um, I do believe it was stated that once upon a time, people actually made equipment to, oh my god, to fucking last. To last. That, that was their business model in the tw in, in the twenties. That try to get light bulbs to last as long as humanly possible. Now, problem is, apparently, according to this documentary, some corporate eggheads in the 1930s, uh, somehow got the idea that if you, that you don't want them lasting too long. Otherwise, they won't go to the store and they, they won't buy them ever again. No, none of us. None, none of the the populace will. Now, th now think of something else in your house that just doesn't really need replacing. Like, I don't know, electrical wall sockets. How about that? Yeah. What? Why would you need to replace those? What if, what if, devil's advocate, devil's advocate, you lived in the 1930s, you didn't know anything about how electric electricity works, and so someone just 
came up to you and he said, You know, there's a there's a component in all your electrical wall sockets that needs to be replaced every two years or so. And we have to charge you to, to, or your landlord for this little waste of time that makes us money. <laughs> we need money. We we need money. We know you're poor though. We everybody's poor. It's the night Teen fucking 30s, but that doesn't mean that I, I still can't gouge you. Now, how about a modern day example, though? Printers! 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 I, I have not owned, I have not owned my own goddamn fully fucking working goddamn printer in like several goddamn what the fuck years. It's, it's, it's at least like five years, give or take a few. Yeah. 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 Oh. Oh. How about this? Let's let's have a more little bit more of a recent example. How about the iPhone? Yes, I was gonna bring this to to Apple's front door. Yes. Yes. Oh shit. Oh shit. I still have like an old iPod Touch third gen that I got back in uh, 2010, and it still works just fine, other than being a little bit slow since it's running iOS 4 something, uh, iOS 4, I think. And meanwhile, every single other iOS device that I have ever owned since then has taken a massive shit on me. Just after a year of owning it. A year, or maybe a year and a half. Even after buying the protective cases. The, the cases. Make that plural. <laughs> <laughs> cases, cases. And after all that, after all that, uh, after all that, this, this this is just stupid. It's just stupid. It's stupid. I do not have a uh, hard on for much of what Apple puts out anymore. Past the Steve Jobs era. Now see, here's the thing with Apple here. Steve Jobs revitalized his company when he when he got back into it and the entire technological industry when he came out with the iPhone, he revitalized that. Yeah, yeah, he was the man, you know. And I think he had physical longevity in mind when Apple first came out with their line of iOS products. But the people who worked for him were not Steve Jobs. And this is still true to this very freaking day. <laughs> yes. That's the problem. That's the problem there. Now, the only argument against the physical longevity of your own iOS device, why would anyone have an argument against this? Can anybody think of a goddamn reason to have an argument against this? But again, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Uh, is that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Again, my shitty third gen iOS device that I got back in like 2010 doesn't nearly have the same amount of processing power as its modern day cousins. But if I were to compare the modern day cousin to the iPhone of the future, whatever that may be, the improvement of the future iPhone's processing power wouldn't really matter all that much to me personally, and probably wouldn't really matter that much to you either. All most people really want, all that most people really need at the end of the day, is the ability to make calls, listen to podcasts, and jailbreak my iOS device so I can make it more usable and you install that Flux app on there to dim down the display panel and make it more easier to read at nighttime. You know, anything else beyond that is pretty much just hogwash. Okay? Okay. Oh, good. So, and yes. Let's get, uh, going back to light bulbs. G let's bring, let's bring this back to light bulbs here for a second here. I know this has been, there's been a major innovations and in legislation put to the light bulb over the past decade or so, where they can be more energy efficient and can last several years, or according to Wikipedia, can have a lifespan of 30,000 or more hours. Which, yeah, you know what? That sounds pretty neat over there, son. And I don't know. But you know what? Let's compare this for a second here. Let's, let's, let's just sit here and think about this for a second. LED light bulb that should, when you think about it, it really should freaking last forever, seeing as how they do not overheat, but instead are guaranteed to last several years or on average about 30,000 hours versus uh, an incandescent light bulb made in the 1920s that has never been turned off as far as I know, and is still running to this very goddamn day. 
No, don't get me wrong. I'm all for LEDs, but if there's if there's a life is there's a life expectancy to your LED light bulb, you're still getting shortchanged for every single penny you got. While at the same time, the the the, the turning wheel of uh, corporatism, some people would say would blame capitalism on this. I I would I would blame corporatism on this personally, but well, tomato tomato, whatever. Yeah, the the turning wheel of corporatism will have you pinned, adhering to your green sensibilities, protecting the environment and all that. Okay, look, even if I was green minded, which I could be, I don't know. I'm not gonna get into that argument here, but I would still I would still not give a rat's ass about its several years lifespan. Several years is not good enough. I shouldn't have to waste my time getting up there and changing the damn thing at all unless there's a freak electrical surge in the system and all my light bulbs go off like freaking grenades <laughs> so but you see though we're all <laughs> my speech impediment is getting the best of me now <laughs> but you see we're all in a special kind of relationship one that we just don't know about, or we, uh, uh, we've we forgotten about, you know, is called compromise. Yeah. In a marriage, there is compromise. In this issue, we continue to compromise our integrity for well-made products, even when we think otherwise while patting ourselves on the back with a freaking LED light bulb, with the old adage that corporations need to continue making money and continuing their highly overpriced monopolies by selling you intentionally faulty products. Again, that is a compromise. Yes. And this is coming from someone who is kind of a capitalist. <laughs> I'm saying all this as a capitalist. <laughs> How can I be a capitalist if I'm saying all this? This is uh this is this is idiocy is what I'm saying. This is idiocy. This is this is no. 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 But, but no, okay. And this is the blah 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 blah. Okay, and this was the thought that almost made me want to start a Kickstarter right then and there. But I'm not an electrical engineer and I did not go to MIT. I chose to be uh, a dumbass on YouTube with a crazy speech impediment. <laughs> but, and, and putting aside the green issue here for a moment, as, as I'm talking about the very thing that is now partially banned in this country, but if that was the case, what if I came out with a Kickstarter where I claimed that I could produce the exact same, the exact same kind of incandescent light bulb that they used to make back in the 1920s that was claimed back then to last a full whopping 2500 hours as opposed to just 1000 hours. <laughs> Yeah, and one of these light bulbs just happened to end up lasting, I don't know, 115, 115 years, just by happenstance. Oh, oh, whatever. Or hell. You know what? It doesn't even have to be an incandescent light bulb, alright? There's absolutely no reason why the LED light the LED light bulbs should ever have a life, a life expectancy. Blah. Period. There's no reason why LED light bulbs should ever have a life expectancy period they they generate hardly any heat it's it's in the freaking led light bulb for the love of god i we could read this we could design the led light bulb to end the monopoly once and for all the monopoly no we're gonna end this never-ending game we kickstarter you know, people who publish patents won't see their ideas stuffed away into some faded dusty dark document folder in some patent office they have the idea they try to make it work on their own merits and most importantly, they hold the patent. I mean, hopefully they do. I mean, if I had an idea for a product, I would desperately be trying to 
sell it to some MIT schmuck who wouldn't know exactly what to do with it, who wouldn't be bought out by special interests, and, you know, at least until the product has completely revolutionized our entire way of life when it is too late for special interests to do anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Got one over you, son. I got you. I got you. <laughs> now, see what do you what do you, whether you like it or not. This is already happening on some levels. Malls are slowly becoming obsolete for a reason, and it's not not just because of Amazon. Even though Amazon is a major part of it, I'll, I can't deny that. <laughs> Amazon, Amazon, and eBay are or major parts of it. I, I, blah, 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 blah. Kickstarter is obviously offsetting some trends as well, though. You can't deny that either. The 3D printer, which was something that was, uh, they invented back in the 1980s, is now, is only now, fully rediscovered some two or three decades later. And if you think a 3D printer is going to print out faulty everyday objects just because it needs a paycheck and a reason to exist afterwards, you will be sorely mistaken. <laughs> the fact, the fact, the fact, that is, is that we all like things that are well made. And even if America tends to kind of fall behind that as expect, expectation, no shit, <laughs> no way in hell will anyone with half a brain cell go buy some cheap ass piece of crap on eBay from a store that is located in China without knowing that whatever it is that you're buying from there is probably going to fall apart within a week or so. But you know what? That's a compromise that you chose to make. And it was a pretty stupid compromise at that. Then again, there's a lot of little compromises that we all make in our day-to-day -day lives that we should all probably think twice about. I think. I think so. I think so. The desire to buy better crafted products isn't an issue for the gentrified, even though it may seem that way to some of you out there, I'm sure. Yeah. I look at it purely from a let's not make waste. Yeah, let's not make waste kind of perspective. Because, to be honest, I just don't like waste. And I especially, I especially don't like wasted effort making more and more light bulbs just because you, you need that higher paying job just to get freaking kids through college and less, unless your kids are going through med school. Goddamn, that's a tough profession. Oh, good luck on that one. Your, your kids will be smarter without college anyway. <laughs> unless they're going through med school. Unless they're going through med school or anything crazy, anything crazy like that. They just won't have much in the way of business prospects if they don't go to college, which for the most part, besides med school and other job fields where you do have to be highly, 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 highly trained is, that is what college is really all about. But the internet is slowly taking over that crux. Anyways, at least once after you start putting yourself out there, getting smart on your own time, and uh, taking a few risks. That's, 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 that's how that works, people. That's how it works. That's how it works. The more you know. Now, also, once the technological singularity hits, everybody's going to be facing the exact same problems anyway. According to the some guy named Aristotle, I don't know who this freaking dude is but he said once when looms weave by themselves man's slavery will end oh <laughs> and layman's terms layman's terms let me let me dumb this down a little bit here once once looms weave by themselves your dumb fleshy human ass is screwed because you need a uh, bad man <laughs> also, poor poor as hell just means you're more creative, which means your kids will probably be the ones to push out the everlasting LED light bulb on Kickstarter. 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 I have a speech impediment. What do you want from me? <laughs> Kickstarter. Kickstarter. <laughs> after they put themselves out there, after they get smart on their own time, and after they take some risks. 
Hell, it might even outlast Willy Wonka's everlasting gobstopper, which would be quite the feat. Although, I'm starting to suspect that the everlasting gobstopper is just an everlasting pack of lies. Now, let me, ju let me just uh, take a quick moment. Just to say, Jesus Christ, I'm starting to sound more and more like Rick Sanchez. The more and more I talk about light bulbs. <laughs> Oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, Morty. <laughs> you know, Morty, according to Aristotle, when loom we looms weave by themselves, your dumb, fleshy human ass is screwed. <sighs> okay, so in conclusion, wasted effort to produce this, the exact same kind of material is stupid. Unless you're planning to be a nurse, college is stupid. Although, uh, college might be a good thing if they're teaching proper speech therapy over there. I might have to take a course over there for speech therapy. <laughs> ah! But light bulbs that are not made by people and their paychecks will always be faulty until machines completely take over or at the very, very best wipe off all the entire human race and they'll do away with light bulbs. Which are AR. <laughs> Man, my speech impediment's going bad today. What do. What do our AI overlo overlords need light bulbs for? Oh god. They'll have night vision, and infrared vision, and all that. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can start this sentence again. <laughs> okay, what the hell was I saying? What do our AI overlords need light bulbs for? They'll have night vision, and they'll have infrared vision, and they'll have all of that kind of stuff. I don't know. They're not gonna have. The point I'm trying to make here is they're they're not gonna need light bulbs when they have all that. <laughs> I don't think we can meet our daily quota on that one, there, human race. No, less waste makes less haste. Yeah. The only logical conclusion a computer AI can ever come up with. That is that is it. That's it right there. You, you can like it or you can hate it, but our AI overlords will have no use for such ego. Or, or just ego in general. Which, you know what? I am perfectly okay with that. I am 110% perfectly okay with that. And especially after my rotting, decaying corpse is shoveled off the streets after the AI wars of 2041 to make way for a nuts and bolts dispensary or a, a re-lubrication terminal. Oh, squeaky parts have to be regularly oiled and lubed. Otherwise, your arm is just gonna fall off. I know, it sucks being a robot. Ah. Okay, so since I'm an open-minded kind of guy who will never stand on one side of the argument, just because if you make an argument about anything, there's some need or necessity to stand on that argument, and to tell you, and to tell the truth, I don't really have that kind of necessity. I find it rather annoying, personally. If you're afraid to be wrong, you are afraid to think, and that's what I say. But you know what? Well, you know what? Why don't we just... Why don't we call this me playing more devil's advocate? Because I'd like to see all sides of this and uh, judge all sides accordingly. And now that I've looked a little more into the opposition on this, I'm finding what's said over there on that other side to be just as interesting. Here on the IMD page, we have a, you know, we have a few people who make some decent cases against having an everlasting light bulb. Some make the claim that they could require much more energy and produce worse lighting, which... I guess they're... It's hard to argue on those grounds, I guess. I mean, the 115-year-old light bulb that's still going strong to this day doesn't look all that bright for a filament that seems to be pretty big in there. I mean, sure, it's become a tourist attraction just for its long life use, but it doesn't seem to be all that sufficient in, you know, 
lighting. There are also claims that I haven't even thought of before, which is that an everlasting light bulb would cost much more on market than the regular disposable ones. Meaning that once you bring your everlasting light bulb up to a company, they will look at what is known as the mean time between failure, then that will ultimately factor into the overall retail value of such an item. Just based on that. Which sucks. That totally sucks. And regardless of my assumption that one day electronics that are produced might have absolutely no human involvement whatsoever, the reality still remains that as long as humans have a hand in it, mean time between failure will always be a factor. Will always be a factor. Now, I would... I would still at least argue that this is where Kickstarter would still thrive. Sure, the business model probably wouldn't pan out in the long run, or I don't know, maybe it will, if they just ditched the whole mean time between failure concept anyways. Because as far as I'm concerned, there is no mean time between failure because there would be no freaking failure. But even if they did ditch the concept, you know, this, this, this convoluted concept of sorts, I guess, I, I, I would expect competitors to start calling foul on that and they would sue Everlasting Light Bulb Company out of existence and therefore the monopoly would live on. But still, you still can't get over the possibility that a longer lifespan may sacrifice current functionality and would, would instead drain your wallet more so in electrical costs as opposed to general production costs. Okay. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, you know what? You know what? I guess you went on that one, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But, okay, you know what? Let's take out the company. The entire company, all right? And let's put in your own 3D printing press. And let's just make some assumptions that one day, or maybe already, this is a thing that MIT has going, that there is a 3D printing press that can produce light bulbs. Okay? Now, what's me what's needed to make a light bulb? Well, uh, parts. Yeah, yeah, parts. Filaments, some copper, and uh, whatever, sure. But you also need some gases in there, in the, in the, in the light bulbs. That is, that is, we're still talking about incandescent light bulbs. Shouldn't be that hard to produce. Just do the 3D printing in some sort of an air-sealed environment, or have some way to pump the gases in. It shouldn't be that hard, really. It really shouldn't. Not sure what goes into LEDs or the dreaded pasty fluorescent lighting, which I freaking hate. I, ha I hate fluorescent lighting. I hate it. I hate fluorescent lighting. It hurts my eyes. Ah. If you could produce a 3D printing press that can handle gases, and, and assuming over time, like microwaves and computers, that the prices of 3D printing presses will go down over time and will become affordable to a general populace, then one day, one day, yes, yes, you could produce better quality products at home with a huge, a huge, a huge, it's gonna be huge, it's gonna be massive, oh, it's gonna be huge, with a huge cost benefit, cost benefit, oh, which is the cost of what goes into 3D printing presses, that is unless they do the same thing to 3D printing presses as they did to regular printers, which is make the ink cartridges, quote-unquote ink cartridges, super, 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 super expensive, so much so that it would be far cheaper just to buy a new printer than to buy more cartridges. So, we're in a conundrum here, I think. Mm-hmm, I think we are. In order to make the best quality products money can buy, you, you gotta go 3D print, 3D printer. But in order to go 3D printer, you gotta somehow make the cartridges that go into 3D printing printers cheap. And if it doesn't work well for regular printers, how well do you think it's gonna work for 3D printers? But here's my sort of, uh, here's my sort of open-ended question to this. Is your 3D printed product still the same price-wise as producing it in a big joint factory, or is there some sort of a cost-benefit that goes into it? I mean, and I'm talking about any, any cost-benefit at all, at all. I mean, you would think there would be. You think there would be. There'd be less time, there'd be less hassle, there'd be less taking up space with a bunch of giant freaking 
factories out there. We get no more factories, more factories, factories there. Cause I don't know. I, we, you know what? We have a, we have this thing called an overpopulation crisis that's hitting the earth. So they say. That's what they say. I don't know. You can choose to believe him or not. I don't know. And all and, and all the while, Elon Musk is trying his damnedest to, to get a million people to Mars. Hell, I'd be lucky if I got to be a citizen of that nation thing that they, they plan to build out in space. Which would totally kick ass, besides the fact that I have absolutely... I, I have to exercise every day. And, and constantly worry about the degradation of my muscle, muscle tissue in low-level gravity environment. Which is a thing genuine thing to worry about if you're an astronaut. And with that being said, if I if I had an easy way to get off this planet, I would probably take it anyway. Hmm. No, uh, no abductions, please. No abductions. No, no aliens. Don't do that. This is an open-ended invitation for that. No, it, it's not that. Unless it's one of those uh, early Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episodes where the Simpsons got abducted and Lisa Simpson thought the aliens were going to eat them, but the aliens were just showing them a, uh, showing them a good time. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're going to abduct me, do that. No probing, please. No probing. Uh, 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 that's... So, yeah, if anyone has a greater knowledge about 3D printers, please, please, over on YouTube, when this goes up on there, please leave a comment, because I really do want to know the answer to this, uh, to these questions, these open-ended questions that I'm putting out there. And we're just going to leave it at this, I think. You know, a question that is open-ended, a question that I genuinely have no uh, idea how to answer. You would think I would have the answers to everything. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't. I don't. And hopefully we will see uh, a part three of this very involved conversation sometime in the future. Yeah.